I want to go over some documents with Alan Watt in the next segment. And I want to get him back up in the next few weeks because he's had so much knowledge. CuttingTheMatrix.com is his website. Our sites are InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.tv. We're launching a major information warfare salvo today. I'll tell you about that coming up in the middle of the next segment. I need your help. We're all in this together. Ladies and gentlemen, I get agitated and upset because I haven't had my neurons destroyed. And I've been reading a lot of globalist documents, in fact, some of which I just read in the last few days, Alan. And I've noticed you talked about this years ago, that a lot of globalist documents bemoan the fact that lithium and fluoride in the water doesn't seem to work on some people and actually makes them more angry. Then I noticed the movie Serenity throws it in your face. And I even saw an interview with the director talking about it. He's anti-New World Order. It was a great movie, but they take a whole planet in the future and put in the atmosphere Prozac or Prozac drug, but it ends up killing most people. They become so passive, like the shrimp that are ingesting Prozac now in the news that just give up and die. But others become more aggressive. And, uh, I mean, do you, I'm seeing that. Do you have any take on that? That's true to an extent with a lot of drugs. You'll find there's some people who can't even take uh uh, an aspirin for a headache uh, will actually make the headache work worse. Others can take painkillers, even you know higher grade painkillers uh, that will intensify the pain. So some people do react in an opposite way with certain medications. However, what you're finding as well is that a lot of see that the whole thing starts when you're you're young. They, they talked about this back in the twenties. How could you literally alter uh, the, the chemistry of the brain? and the chemistry of the person if you wanted a, a world of peace. And they talked about inoculations were the best ways to do it, and they could target specific areas. Diet injections, However, diet injections, injunctions, Bertrand Russell. That's right. Yes, and, and also, and even before he came along with that too and said that openly, uh, there were others who talked about that as far back as, uh, as George Bernard Shaw in about 1918. So, uh, who would belong to the Fabian Society that belongs to the Royal Institute of International Affairs or Council on Foreign Relations? So, this is an old, old agenda. Um, and what they've found, too, since then is that with your first inoculations as a child, um, they're supposed to piggyback on certain enzymes that, that go to the brain. And, and uh, it's interesting, you see, that every cell in the brain, every type of tissue in your body vibrates at a particular frequency, a very small electrical frequency, not a large one, very small. It's electrochemical, also... electrochemical. Yes. And, and therefore, uh, the nutrients for that particular part of the brain uh, will, will vibrate at the same rate as the tissue is, it wants to go to or the tissue it wants it to come to, and that's how it finds the tissue with a particular nutrient. And that's well, what they're saying with all these new vaccines. It will literally block you being able to become upset or resist, and suddenly it's all over the news. They're now moving against us publicly. Yes, but along with, with the, the fact that they could take up the nutrients to, to different parts of the brain, uh, they knew they could piggyback the chemicals or even a virus on. No, that's what well. they say. They say they're piggybacking the steroid uh, on the back of a live, uh, with this particular one in the news this week, with a live herpes virus to take it right into the brain and hit you hard. That's right. And therefore, they could lobotomize different parts of the brain that makes you uh, not, not so much aggressive. If you're aggressive, you can be aggressive for a very good reason, and that means surviving. And uh, all of these characters from the Fabian Society and long before talked about the fact that um, the world they'd bring in we had one obstacle, and that was the general public. How do we lobotomize the public and make them passive? And obedient. And there's and no so doubt from studying idea. all the last major vaccines interrupt, I want you to comment on this, that they're adding these piggybackers into the vaccines for at least the last 30 years. They've already yes. hit the public. That's why they're zombies. Most people out there are already brain damaged. Yes, That's why yeah. we can't reach them. Yeah, they, they can't understand. It's not they don't want to understand. They can't understand. And uh, those parts that we should kick in with, with uh, anxiety uh, and a little bit of fear leading to decisive action uh, are gone. However, the thing is, some people sneak through just like the, as I say, the, the, um, the, the medications often have the opposite effect. Some people, uh, they'll find that because their physiology is slightly different, uh, those enzymes that uptake to the brain can be diverted to other parts of the body, often into the intestines. 
and have found people, for, for instance, with lots of allergies. Uh, well, somehow. no, they now admit Crohn's is a measles vaccine. And yeah, that's why yeah. you have all these new diseases. It ends up attacking with an autoimmune response in the intestines. And that's almost killed one of my great employees who, mm -hmm. who almost got very close to dying from Crohn's. Uh, and they know exactly what they're doing. They, they, they've known what caused that for over 50 or 60 years at the top levels. See, there's different levels of medicine. Whatever's in the Lancet journals, what all the doctors believe, that's what's taught in university. But in the higher levels of medicine, it's part of the military-industrial complex because warfare takes in medicine in a big way for bringing down populations long term. So uh, they've known this for 50 years, what they were doing. Incredible. Longer. Yeah. Stay there, Alan. Finish up on the other side, riveting. And everything Alan is saying is in all their own literature. For, for banking, for government, they have super advanced schools that once you become a general or once you become a governor, they then send you to the advanced Woodrow Wilson School or others to be really taught the secret plan. And they don't want you leading a frontal assault. They always want to intimidate you and put the onus on you like you're morally bad while they're sucking off of you, while they're poisoning you. And all their minions are being slow killed. But they love it. Because most of them are already so brain damaged. Now, we're launching a key operation. We're going to Alan Watt in two minutes. Poison tap water. We've had seven terms in a row. We've never failed, thanks to you, the listeners, making whatever term we put out the number one search term. Then it leads them back to our articles and our battle plan of action. Two days ago, it was brain-eating vaccine. It caused over 100 blogs and newspapers like Wired Magazine to go absolutely ape. Even News of the World tried to spin it to make it look like disinfo. That's one of your big tabloids on store shelves. It is not working. We are countering them. The new search term is poison tap water. It's at Infowars.com by Matt Ryan. What, uh, Paul Watson's going to expand this article with even more documentation. because Again, I have these ideas live on air during the live battle space. And that's what this is. This is total resistance for the species to survive against a scientific technocracy. This is not a game that you're living in a hardcore science fiction nightmare, but humanity is rising. And for all of you who want to make jokes about it, you're already casualties. Enjoy it. If you can't see pure tyranny when they're out in the open, now saying they're going to put lithium in the water to control you when they're already doing it, then fine. Enjoy yourselves. They admit corn syrup. They knew increased cancer massively. And now more medical journals admit it, and they don't care. They're going to hit you hard. Aspartame, bisphenol A, sterilization, cancer, and it lowers aggression. Everything they do in standardization and products you eat and drink and, and the packaging is meant to sterilize and, this is key, and reduce your aggression. It's aggression that fires the resistance, that fires determination, as Alan Watts said. Here's the article. Alex Jones is launching a new campaign to inform the public about the toxic chemical fluoride being added to the water across the country. While EPA scientists and workers are calling for an end to water fluoridation, we have a link to their top scientists coming out and saying it's deadly. The government is doing everything in its power to continue and even increase the amount of toxic chemicals being added to the public water supplies. Click here for the PDF of this. Of this yellow white and black document. There is poison in the tap water. That'll get locals' attention, posted in legal areas. And it goes on in the piece to say, fact, fluoride is a dangerous substance and the active ingredient in most insecticides. If ingested as little as one-tenth of an ounce of fluoride can kill a hundred-pound adult and one in 100 of an ounce can kill a 10-pound infant. Studies have shown that exposure to fluoride can cause neurological damage and an increased risk of bone cancer. Fiction. Fluoride added to the public water supply strengthens teeps and helps prevent cavities. Demand safe water. Demand the truth. Visit Infowars.com. There is poison in the tap water. This is how a free humanity would resist. They would go out and hit the enemy everywhere. Now, the media is going to go absolutely ape over this if you post these everywhere. They're going to try to demonize whoever did it in your area. They're going to demonize yours truly. But then it's going to spur a public debate that this is poison. And a lot of local media is now admitting it's poison because they're reading about the EPA scientists saying take it out. So the key search term is poison tap water. The key search term, three words, poison tap.
tap water. Get it out to everybody. We're unstoppable together. God bless you. Alan, I'm going to try to sit back in the last 23 minutes and shut up and have you break down this. And while you're talking about all the different poisons and things, I'm going to show mainstream news articles proposing drugs in our water to make us servile. Alan Watt, break it down. Yes, I mean, it's obvious if you want to take down a whole population and the whole world's populations, you must literally attack the, the one enemy they have, and that's your ability to survive because you have innate, you're born with innate survival principles. A part of it is intuition, a reaction, and your solution to the particular problem. When they can knock out that part of the brain so that you're passive, you don't even notice there's a threat in any direction, then you, then you're a happy citizen. You're exactly what they want you to be. Um, and, and in fact, I, I keep referring to wild animals, just watching wild animals. Uh, if I get foxes coming around here all the time, and if it's a tree down, uh, the fox, you can sit and watch him at the top of the hill. Uh, he'll, he'll, he won't go past that tree. It's something different in, in, in his root, his little circle, and he'll observe it from 50 different angles before he decides it's, it's safe or unsafe to go past it. Because he doesn't know it's a bluff. There could be somebody behind there with a gun to shoot him. Who, who knows what it is? But uh, that's that's innate survival instincts. Uh, you're born with those things. And we're supposed to have that. Now, the big boys themselves, Charles Galton Darwin and all the rest of them, uh, in the 1950s, a descendant of, Char of Charles Darwin, and, and he was a physicist, this guy as well, who worked on the Manhattan Project. He was a top eugenicist. He, he was all for world um, um, domination. And he talked about the need to eradicate uh, the useless eaters, just like Bertrand Russell. They all knew each other. And he said, we, we have to. He says, we must retain our capabilities to remain wild. He says, those who survive are wild men. He says, therefore, we are leading the planet Earth. We're the captains of the ship. We must retain those wild men capabilities. But the rest of the public, he said, uh, must literally have their ability destroyed to preserve themselves. They would manage by the state. They've all echoed the same principles, and it's been happening all our lives long. You just read a quote from one of these psychos. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and that's right. And, and they mean it. And not only do they mean it, they work for top world uh, uh, societies uh, linked with the United Nations. The United Nations is the front, of course, wherever they've gone with inoculations. That's what they've done is to destroy, especially the so-called primitive tribes that have lived uh, for thousands of years completely independent from, from the rest of the world. Uh, they've given them inoculations. It's the first thing they do. When we went into Iraq, the first group that went in after the troops was UNESCO for inoculations to make sure the children got inoculations. That will raise up a, a population who are easily managed and pliable. Now, when you go into military strategy going as far back as, as World War II, they talked about uh, prolonged warfare over populations. Prolonged, that meant intergenerational warfare. If something lasted 40, 50 years, because we've had 100 years wars in the past, we forget these things. These guys don't. They're trained in this stuff. They said they'd have to make sure uh, that uh, the upcoming future troops would have to be hit at either at birth, pre-birth, that meant inoculating the mother while the child's in the womb, uh, or, or getting the child very soon after birth with inoculations to make sure that he grows up and he will not be a fighter. He won't mind being dominated or ruled. This is in, these are in military manuals that they teach at the top in military colleges. So they've been doing this in, in uh, Iraq, of course, and I'm sure in 20, 30 years' time you'll see the results of it uh, with a dumbed-down happy population with hats on backwards dancing to rap music uh, and taking drugs and all the rest of it, but they will be unconcerned that they're dominated by foreign powers. This is long-term strategy for the entire planet, and as I say, the ones at the top who formed the League of Nations and formed the United Nations, that was their goal, to bring about a world of peace. Peace is where those who should naturally rule the world are ruling the world. And I mean naturally ruling it. And they believe in the Darwinian principle that those who had achieved total success and held on to power and money through successive generations had proven by the Darwinian principle of survival of the fittest that they had the right to rule. Everyone else who, who hadn't achieved that particular level or uh, a standard of living was there for a failure. They were the junk genes, and uh, they would only reproduce junk genes, and therefore they had no need for them in a post-industrial um, society. This stuff was discussed before World War I. By, by those who formed, eventually formed the League of Nations, then the United Nations.